Hello, Gary Stearman. It's time for another update from Prophecy in the News. Today is Friday the 16th, and I go back to a verse of Scripture that we have visited repeatedly lately, uh, and that is, of course, from Zechariah chapter 12. And it has to do with the siege of Jerusalem, which I think is one of the central features of Latter-day Prophecy. Behold, I will make Jerusalem a cup of trembling unto all people round about, when they shall be in siege both against Judah and against Jerusalem. That siege, I believe, has already begun. A siege simply being uh, an attempt to surround uh, a country or a city, in this case Jerusalem, uh, with the idea ultimately of getting a stranglehold uh, against that place. And they're doing a pretty good job of it. The Palestinians, the Iranians, the Russians, the Syrians. And I have a few uh, news items. Uh, I have here three news items from Debka, and they're dated uh, starting in uh, on the 13th of March. Under the heading of uh, political calculations have consequences. Israel is now developing its own bunker buster bomb, an improved precision bunker burrowing weapon, which Israel mil military in industries unveiled on March the 6th. It's a 500 pound MPR 500. Uh, it's a, a laser guided bomb that operates by first penetrating a fortified position and immediately it will be followed by two or three other bunker busters that will enlarge and deepen the hole that it made. And so uh, these are very precise. They are laser guided. They are made for penetrating double reinforced concrete walls such as those surrounding uh, the nuclear facilities in Iran. Uh, the new weapon is designed as an upgrade to the U.S. MK-82, now in e existing Israeli uh, Air Force stocks. The lethality, the precision, the relatively uh, light weight of the new weapon, say its manufacturers, enable its use against multiple targets in a single pass. Uh, you hear that multiple targets. We're hearing these days, of course, that the uh, Iranian nuclear weapons research facilities are many in number, not just one, and so uh, that's why they're talking about multiple targets. All of this is coded military language. The IMI, that is the Israeli Military in, uh, Industries presentation of this particular bomb called the MPR uh, 500, took place at the height of Israel's argument with the Obama administration over the need for a near-term strike on Iran's nuclear facilities, especially those which Tehran is busy transferring to fortified underground bunkers. And I guess the, the heart and core of that news item is that the United States is on the verge of withdrawing its support uh, of uh, Israel uh, with new and improved bunker busters, such as the type needed to go through those bunker walls. And so Israel goes ahead and builds her own bunker busters. Uh, meanwhile, there are rehearsals <coughs> in Syria and Gaza for an Iranian-Israeli showdown. Iran and Russia, according to Debka, dated March 14th, uh, both won ground on the Syrian battlefield at America's expense uh, with this week's Assad victory over the rebels in Idlib. The indecisive way the Israeli confrontation with Iran's Palestinian proxy called Jihad Islami uh, wound down also adds points to Tehran and less directly to Moscow. You notice how many news releases we're seeing that link Moscow and Tehran these days. Well, this is biblical. Uh, because the Bible in several different places links latter-day uh, Persia, Iran, with Moscow, Russia, called in the Bible Meshach. <laughs> well, how, how much clearer can you get? And we keep getting news items in which Iran and Russia are uh, involved in joint military efforts. Finally, on the 14th of March, we find this headline from Debka, Iran threatens northern Israel with bombardments from Lebanon. Tehran has begun capitalizing on its allies' two perceived 
victories. Bashar Assad's success in seizing Idlib from rebel hands and the Palestinian Jihad Islami's triumphal missile assault from Gaza. And you haven't been hearing much about that in the papers, but uh, Jihad Islami, that is the uh, arm, the weapons arm of um, Hamas in Gaza, has been firing rockets. They have fired, by the way, thousands of rockets uh, over the last few years, hundreds lately. And what's, pr what's problematic for Israel now is that the newer rockets that are just about to be launched are uh, much more uh, high-tech, capable of longer throw distances and greater accuracy. Brings us up to the 16th of March, Islamic Jihad now threatens Tel Aviv. <clears throat> Quds brigades say uh, that they have rockets that can strike far beyond Ashdod and will use them if Israel does not uh, uh, halt its targeted killings of Hamas leaders. And of course, uh, in retaliation for all those rocket firings, it, the uh, Israeli uh, uh, defense force has been targeting the leaders of Hamas and making precision strikes and killing those leaders, uh, now Islamic uh, Jihad comes back and says, if you, uh, if you don't stop that, we're going to start firing rockets that can reach Tel Aviv. Uh, we have here Islamic Jihad claimed on Friday. That's, by the way, today, as I make this. It has rockets that can reach Tel Aviv. A member of the terror group uh, Quds Brigades, using the alias Abu Ibrahim, uh, told the uh, uh, AFP, Agence France Press, and by the way, that's a French press agency that sort of acts as an intermediary, uh, has uh, neutrality and can get these stories. They told Agence France Press that they were able to expand the reach of rocket fire beyond the Israeli town of Ashdod. Quote, if the occupation targets any leader, of any Palestinian group whatsoever or any citizen, the brigades will respond with force and expand the reach of the response beyond Ashdod. That's code language for we can go all the way to Tel Aviv. Uh, and if they start hitting downtown Tel Aviv, uh, which by the way is Israel's largest city, most bustling metropolis, uh, Israel of course will strike back in a, in a big way. That's how close we are to triggering a war in the Middle East. We continue to talk about these things, uh, wondering to ourselves all along what in the world has precluded a war thus far. Uh, I suppose only the hand of God. Now here's a, uh, a date line from March the 16th. March 16th, Israeli ultimate, ultimatum, stop the missiles by Saturday, or what? Well, let me read the, the news item. After five days of nonstop missile fire on dozens of towns and villages, Israel, Thursday night, March 15th, gave Israel and Hamas two days to halt the shooting or else Israeli defense forces would go into action against Gaza. And this is what's happening right now, even as we speak. Debka Files military sources report that neither Egypt nor Hamas can be expected to go up against the missile shooters just now. The attacks have been taken over from Jihad Islami by a small group of Palestinians, which calls itself Haraka Muhadin. I'll tell you what, we have all of these little groups and subgroups. They're all a part of Hamas. Uh, there are many, many names and many, many small factions, but they're all acting under the direction of Hamas. And so beginning a few days ago, with the talks in Washington breaking down, with the loss of territory in Syria, with the expansion of the aims of Hamas, with Israel's ability to decisively block some of Hamas's latest rocket firings, and now with Hamas issuing an ultimatum, we can send missiles all the way to Tel Aviv. Uh, we have th this siege that Zechariah talks about gaining strength and power on a daily basis. Things are getting tighter every day, and that's being exacerbated, by the way, because of uh, the United States' failure, really, to help Israel, beginning with uh, uh, our announcement that, hey, 
we're not going to aid you if you want to attack Iran. We're going to withdraw our support of, of your bunker busters. Israel is now making her own bunker busters and going ahead and saying, thank you very much. We'll proceed without your help. And meanwhile, the uh, enemies of Israel are gaining confidence with each passing day. Just thought I'd pass that along. You prophecy watchers, read Isaiah, uh, read uh, Jeremiah, read Zechariah, chapters 12 through 14, and sort of keep up with the daily news. We're looking up. It can't be long, Gary Stearman. We're looking up, so you be looking up, too.